We're gonna spread happiness. We're gonna spread freedom. Obama's gonna change it. Obama's gonna lead them. We're gonna change it and rearrange it. We're gonna change the world. I have found the answer. It is the same question that our nation is asking. Are you the one? Are you the one? I'm here to tell you, Iowa, he is the one. He is the one. Barack Obama! It has become easy to forget this truth. If we're honest with each other, we know that sometimes, on both sides of the Atlantic, we have drifted apart and forgotten our shared destiny. There have been differences between America and Europe. No doubt there will be differences in the future. But the burdens of global citizenship continue to bind us together. A change of leadership in Washington will not lift this burden. In this new century, Americans and Europeans alike will be required to do more, not less. Partnership and cooperation among nations is not a choice. It is the only way, the one way, to protect our common security and advance our common humanity. Tonight, a proposal for an expanded so-called free trade zone from Alaska to uh, the tip of South America. It's a plan from the business elites, the political elites, that will cost more American jobs, cost American sovereignty, but it would fulfill the president's father's vision. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. As Iraq veterans against the war, we are resisting an occupation we once risked our lives for. We swore to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, but we found out the hard way that the greatest enemies of the Constitution are not to be found in the sands of some far-off land, but rather right here at home! We are inspiring a generation of young Americans to find a better way to serve their country than dying for empire. And by supporting those who are actively resisting, we inspire further resistance and ensure that soldiers still have the right as is their duty to disobey illegal orders. You guys know the lies, and I bled for these lies. I watched my brothers die for these lies. Some of the Obama supporters are there. Obama for change, right? Obama to end the war, right? Well, I have some bad news about Obama too. The anti-war candidate, right? He wants to keep 40,000 troops in Iraq indefinitely. He wants to continue the occupation, interfere with Iraqi sovereignty. He wants to increase reliance on private contractor mercenaries like Blackwater, the guys that have all those incidents one after another, killing Iraqi civilians. I mean, if you look at Obama's voting record, I mean, he has voted to, you know, not to end the war. He has voted to finance the war. But he, he is every bit as much of an intervention. He wants to send more troops in Afghanistan. He wants to broaden the military. So I think it's a fraud what he's talking about. President Bush has talked about our safety in Iraq for 50 years. Maybe 100. I can find a Some people, like the senator, he thinks we should be there for 100 years if necessary. How can he commit the young people of this world five more generations to be in Iraq if it's necessary? I say it's yeah. time to come home. Senator McCain, yes. you got it. 
I believe U.S. Uh, troop levels need to increase, and I've, for at least a year now, have called for uh, two additional brigades, uh, perhaps three. It's time for us to withdraw some uh, of our combat troops out of Iraq, deploy them here in Afghanistan, and I think we have to seize that opportunity. Uh, I believe this has to be our central focus, the central front uh, on uh, our battle against terrorism. Uh, I've said that we need to increase the size of our military, which politically, if it got to the floor, probably uh, would pass. But there, as you know, a whole bunch of folks on the left who think that that is a waste of money. I think it's important. So look out. Believe me, that war is not over. I condemn Russian aggression. Today I reiterate my demand that Russia abide by the ceasefire. Russia must know that its actions will have consequences. But before I say anything else, I just want to say that I was running from Georgian troops bombing our city, not Russian troops. I want to say thank you to the Russian troops that were helping us out. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order. It's about the idea of freedom. It's yeah. about the future of the whole region. It's about the future of Europe and the new world order. Are we at one of those moments in history in which there is the necessity for a new world order? There's a need for a new world order. So I think we can say that uh, uh, the Constitution reflected a enormous blind spot in this culture that carries on until this day. and. and uh, and that the framers uh, had that same blind spot. It is an imperfect document, and I think it is a document that reflects uh, some deep flaws. So it's, it's not so much a, a secretive conspiracy, it's a contest between ideologies, whether we believe in our institutions here, our national sovereignty, our constitution, or are we going to further move in the direction of international government, more UN? You know, this country goes to war under UN resolutions. We're moving into a new era, believe it or not. With the dollar and our economy and the world economy, this is a new era. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges for the future.